Hey guys, welcome back to the Mind Crack server, the bitter, frozen northern wasteland of the Spawn Village. Passing by the uh, chicken coop, uh, elusive chicken bar and grill, plus in. We are coming over here today to do a little ice harvesting, which I haven't done yet. Um, I need to do it to add to my collection trays in my farms to speed up the delivery process. So uh, this is actually my first time coming over here. It looks like not everything is quite frozen. So I guess I'm gonna be hanging out a little bit until this freezes. Um, and I did not bring a spare ender chest because I'd like to uh, get a lot of this stuff while I'm over here. But I'm pretty sure when Etho made this thing, he put one here. I would think you would put it right here, or maybe here, right by the entrance. Um, I seem to remember it being like under the trees or something, though. Look at that biome change. It's raining like eight blocks over. Um, I, I hope he didn't take it with him. Oh, uh, never mind. There it is. Right there. Okay, good. That's kind of a weird spot for it. Maybe because he... I don't know, maybe he's not done with this. Maybe he's gonna put some uh, finishing touches on the aesthetics. Um, okay, good. So that is there. I'm gonna wait for that to freeze and gonna harvest some ice. And then we're gonna continue working on the reed farm. Uh, people in the comments and also on Reddit have given me a number of suggestions on different ways to power up the pistons. Uh, first off, I know that you only need one piston for the cactus. All you have to do is touch the second block and the second and third will pop off. Um, but I like that uh, visual of the wall moving out two pistons tall. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not worried about using more pistons. Um, despite how uh, resource, resource intensive they are. But uh, as soon as we're done with here, um, we're going to spend some just a minute looking at some different redstone configurations and then we're going to continue constructing. All right, here we are back on the uh, my testing range map. So uh, this is what I was using before, this big thing. And a number of people suggested improvements on different ways to do the redstone wiring. I tried a couple of them. A couple of them did not seem to work, at least as I understood them. But uh, at least one of them, I think what they were trying to tell me is to do something like this. Um, so the redstone torch here, in addition to lending power to this block, can also lend power to this block. And if you put a uh, bit of redstone wire there, it'll power the uh, the pistons in between. So you can get away with half as many repeaters and half as many redstone torches as I used, which is nice. Um, that was one alternative. Another alternative, which is way more compact, which I don't know why I didn't consider this to begin with, but I, I didn't, whatever, um, is this one right here. So um, I, with this one, you send one line of power down to power these bottom pistons, and then you put a line above these other pistons to do the sides, uh, to do the, the, the uh, top row. And um, this one is obviously going to be taller because to cover up the wiring, we're going to have to have a block like that. Come on. And then two blocks here. This would probably be stairs or something. So it's going to be quite a bit taller than that, but quite a bit narrower. And um, I've, I looked at the lens, and we're going to do both. So uh, let's head back to the mine de Kraka. All right, here we go. Um, so what I've decided to do is to keep this center shelf wide like this. Um, because, actually, I really like the way it looks aesthetically. Uh, I still have to update this. That won't take me very long, but um, I like this sort of look, and I don't know what we're going to do with this. I may put wood down here in the center, actually, 
to uh, make some sort of walkway out of it. I'm not really sure. Maybe we'll put like a little sitting area. We'll have tea here or something. And I still may extend this the other way. But for these little forks down here, the fork fingers that we haven't updated yet into anything else, I think we're going to be expanding those into the more compact version I just showed you. So if you remember uh, what I just showed you, the compact version, imagine these leaf blocks are pistons. This is sandstone. The reeds would be right here where that torch is, and the power would be right there. Um, so I want to leave three blocks in between each shelf of reeds to allow them to uh, fall down into the collection area without hitting the, the shelf below or the shelf next to. So if you notice, I, uh, I put this little mock-up here. If these are pistons, these are the sandstone blocks on the pistons. The reeds would be this torch, one, two, three blocks, and then reeds. That spacing <laughs> works out perfectly for the spacing I already built into here. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, however, if we continue to add the, the other side of this one, you notice we're already really close to this. This farm is... Uh, I looked at it from below, and it's much wider than the reed, uh, not reed, the wheat farm. The reed, <laughs> burr, 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 burr. The, uh, the farm over there, the wheat farm, is not finished. It's going to have an outer shell on it. So it's going to actually be about this wide. And I was thinking about it. I don't think I want them to touch. Um... Because if you think about it, after after this block here, so the 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 reeds will be there, and then we're gonna need a few blocks here. So the actual water collection shelf down below is gonna have to come way out to here, and it's gonna overlap quite a bit. So what I'm thinking is that we'll have this one like this, and then this one uh, will just be like that. And we, uh, we'll get rid of this. Say, say goodbye, sandstone. <laughs> say goodbye, spawner. So then we can remove this. We won't need the collection area on this side. So the collection area will be able to, the shelf underneath, will be able to stop like basically here. Which is good, so they won't intersect each other. Um, so I think that's going to be good. What we ended up doing was we added another row of wheat on this side and another row on that side. And that's going to be a pretty good amount of reeds once we get everything done. Uh, the only issue is... Oh, God! Burr, 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 burr. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted by gravity. Um, so we're going to be adding another track of water right there. Water needs to come down there. Um, only issue with that is uh, this thing no longer works. We're going to have to modify that. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need uh, this may need to be extended this way and then this is going to need to be like this and then we're going to need another one underneath here to split the water between here and here. So I'm probably going to reverse engineer it. I'm going to shut the water off, demolish this, then I'm going to build the one directly above here which will take care of this and then I'll redo that. Like so. Okay, so right here is gonna, uh, not that torch, right here is going to be the new lane for the new fork. I'll start calling them forks until they're, this whole thing is filled out because it kind of does look like a fork. So we're definitely going to add one down this way. Um, so I guess we just increased our wheat harvest by about 50%. And I thought about even after everything I just said, I thought about going ahead and adding one here. Uh, oh, <laughs> badger. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to. Anyway, okay, so next thing we need to do is extend this guy down to there. And I'm going to wire up this one and that one.
All right, so this uh, this side works, but I am really out of supplies. I only have a handful of sticky pistons left. I'm totally out of redstone except for this. This is all I have left. I do have a few stacks of repeaters I just made out of necessity. And a pretty good amount of redstone torches. But uh, anyway, I need to go caving. You know what? I may return to that ravine we found a few episodes ago when we did the falling damage tests. Um, however, there's one thing I noticed just now. I gotta... This whole thing works. But I gotta rebuild the whole thing. Because I built uh, the pistons. Or at least partially. I can probably edit it. But... Uh, the, uh, the pistons are one block too low. There needs to be... If, uh, if that's one of the reeds, you don't want it pushed off. You only want the top two pushed off. So I actually made this wrong. But it does work. It took me a little while to find out uh, or figure out the best way to hook up uh, the repeaters here. And one of the problems I was running into is that once you start hooking up repeaters... Um, you couldn't put any repeaters down here in this trough. While you can put repeaters here and power going across here will still power this block and allow this piston to fire. If you put a repeater down here, it's not going to power the piston below there. So I had to find a way to uh, reinforce the power here and I found a pretty simple solution. We've got a repeater here and here after we reach reach the uh, 15 block limit and then we put a piece of sandstone here so that it cuts off the power uh, every 15 blocks so it can only come from these repeaters it can only go that away a few of the designs I tried I was getting power uh, re repeating and it was a kind of thing where it would never turn off regardless of what position the lever was in but this is a really Really simple solution. This whole side only uses eight repeaters, which is awesome. And so I guess that's it. I'm going to have to uh, take up all the redstone, you know, dig out the bottom la level, blah, 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 dig up the bottom level of pistons, put them on top, uh, make everything one block higher. That's why, for one thing, I like to build like I haven't even touched this side. For for one, I didn't have the supplies. But uh, I like to make sure everything works, and I made a pretty big boo-boo there. So I need to uh, do some editing, but um, the kinks are not too bad. I mean, the uh, I think it's going to be not too bad to wire it up. Um, but anyway, okay, so we've worked on this two videos in a row. Next time we'll do something different. I don't know what, haven't decided. And uh, probably the video after that, we'll probably return to this. I would like to get this operational. For 1.3, I would like to start trading with villagers, even if I have to cart my stuff all the way to someone else's village. Um, I heard they're reworking the way trading works, and I'm not sure what the details are that. I mostly avoid snapshots. But I want to take advantage of my big farms. Um, I think they trade wheat, too. So I'm gonna, I am gonna—I want to get my wheat farm operational as well. Actually... It is actually operational. It's just um, the uh, the whole light on off thing I wanted to do isn't set up, but I could still be harvesting it. So um, I'm gonna start trading with villagers pretty soon. As soon as we get this guy operational. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're making pretty good progress on this guy, but we gotta do some mining. I still have to recover stuff from here. Uh, next time, not sure what I'm gonna be doing. We'll see. So uh, see you guys later. Take it easy. Have a good day. Bye.